Welcome to part 2 of our learning eigenvalue, eigenvector and related concepts. In this video you are going to learn how electron spin can be measured using these tools. Electron spin is a very counterintuitive concept and we are going to look into it and also see how this spin differs from the classical spin and most importantly how do we measure it mathematically. My name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to Electron Spin and Related Concepts to Eigenvalue and Eigenstate. Well, in the first video I have already covered some of these concepts although I have given it in the I button. However, this is a quick recap on those who have missed my earlier video. So, in the first video we started at the very uh, root level and we understood the meaning of Eigen which comes from the German word and it means own or characteristic and the related words which are related to Eigen and it means independent, autonomous etc. From there we found that overall the word Eigen means own, inherent or characteristic. From there we came to know that eigenvalue and eigenvector on a, a pictorial representation can be something like this. As you can see that the eigenvalue remains the uh, changes various, the eigenvector remains the same. In case of this uh, shear mapping of the uh, picture of Mona Lisa, the blue arrow is an eigenvector and this uh, remains the constant and doesn't change various, the eigenvalue actually changes. So overall from there we uh, inferred that eigenvalue means more or less how much an eigenvector actually shows the different kind of directions. From there we went and understood what is an eigenvalue equation that the vectors which are represented uh, represented in terms of arrow can be used to represent matrices and how with multiplication we get both the B which stands to be 5 and 2. So the stretch of a vector is known as the eigenvalue of the matrix. So we say that we found the eigenvector for the matrix and B is the eigenvector for uh, the matrix A. We also saw later that how we can see and mathematically found out this equation AB equals to lambda V and I have shown you that this can be mathematically proven. And how do you find the eigenvector? Uh, I have covered in the first video step by step approach in uh, finding out eigenvectors. We also saw that how rotation is very important because in terms of rotation how the cos theta and sin theta changes and finally what we saw is that eigenvalue and eigenvector in terms of quantum mechanics how do we do that we have taken a typical quantum uh, system where we are measuring the energy in terms of the Hamiltonian and how we can get, uh, get that En would be 100% certainty how although there are superpositions which we have ignored and in this in this quantum state or in a quantum system how do the eigenvalues and eigenvector behave and we paused in the last video where I told that we would be covering the electron spin in the next video and this is where we start in today's video electron spin and its related concepts of eigenvalue and eigenvector. Now the first thing that uh, you need to understand is that it typically when we talk of the spin of an electron it doesn't actually uh, behave or spin like a spinning top. No, an electron spin does not mean that it literally uh, uh, rotates like a spinning top. The term spin in quantum mechanics, I would say it is a bit misleading because it suggests a classical picture of particle physically rotating with its own axis which is not in the case of electrons or subatomic particles. So here what we see that spin is a very intrinsic property and electron spin is a fundamental intrinsic form of angular momentum that is built into the nature of the particle and it is not the result of any physical rotation uh, in space but rather a quantum mechanical property. Now here you can see those planets and stars in classical physics we say angular momentum associated with objects in motion like a spinning top or a planeting, planet orbiting around a star and so on. However in quantum mechanics angular momentum can also exist without any actual physical motion. As I told you, it is counterintuitive. So remember that in quantum mechanics, it is not that you have to have a physical object which will rotate. It can uh, measure angular momentum, although there is no physical uh, motion. So spin is a type of angular momentum that the particle possesses 
internally and uh, what we do is that electron spin is described mathematically by something which is called a spin operator we will look into that in today's video and in electron spin uh, uh, I would say the plus a 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 are actually developed by what are called Pauli matrices after the mathematician and physicist Wolfgang Pauli. Uh, so what we can say that although a spin is not a literal rotation, it gives a kind of a magnetic moment, meaning that the electron behaves like a tiny magnet. And this is very important. This is one of the reasons that the idea of spin was introduced. And we also saw that in the stern a stern girl like experiment the spin is also quantized we will cover up stern girl like experiment in another video but this is uh, a nice point where we can actually um, i would say uh, refer to stern girl like where uh, the 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 uh, through a silver atom the beams were being sent and once it passes through the north pole and south pole we get a spin and again when it passes through a south pole and a north pole we get a spin so all these spins are actually show that they are I would say quantized that means they have a specific kind of a quantity it won't spin in a random fashion so uh, in, the, in 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 case of an electron spin we denoted by a spin operator which is denoted by this s sub z it's a hat which is a kind of a convention and z I will explain this are around the z axis so uh, this is the spin operator and it actually operates on Pauli matrices and Pauli matrices actually play a very crucial role in describing the electron spin in quantum mechanics so the these Pauli matrices are used to represent uh, spin half particles like the fermions electrons and these matrices are essential for understanding the intrinsic angular momentum now if I see that these Pauli matrices are denoted by Sigma X Sigma Y and Sigma Z then I should say that this is a 2 by 2 Hermitian and unitary matrices that correspond to the spin operators in the X Y and Z direction so these matrices look like this and if you're really wondering what those value 0 and 1 actually means so this 1 actually means that the uh, the effect of maintaining or flipping the spin state and this 0 actually means that the spin uh, uh, the spin state does not change that means it remains the same However, for a spin half particle, the electron, the Pauli matrices is on a two dimensional, I would say, uh, spinner. And uh, th this uh, spin half electron particle is, as I, I was telling, that it acts on a two dimensional spinner that represents the electron spin. And the spinner can describe either in a spin half, which I have denoted in the Dirac notation, or in a spin down. However, let us remember that electrons can be in superposition state. So a general spin can be written as this. And I have not taken, as you can understand, you can always square the alpha and the beta uh, to get the probability density and so on. So from here, what we can understand, the usage of Pauli matrices being a 2 by 2 Hermitian matrix, what do those x, y and z actually denotes? So now let us take an example and I would like to show you a very, very simple example walk through that how do we actually use this in order to measure the spin because that is the objective of today's video. So first of all we will measure uh, the spin along the z axis. So let us say the electron in the spin state up would be 1 0. So if we apply the uh, this uh, Z operator, which we j just saw, why we are applying Z operator? Because we are measuring the electron spin in the Z axis. We get something like this. So what does this mean? This means that the measurement of spin along the Z axis gives a plus one. And that is why H bar by two, which is a reduced Planck's constant is positive. Now, if the electron spin is in the down state, which is a zero one, applying the same operator gives this. What does it mean? This also means that the measurement of the axis gives a value of minus 1, which is uh, a, a unit of h bar by 2. So the Pauli matrices, uh, we can tell that these matrices, uh, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, which represent the spin operators, we can say that these matrices actually do this. They represent the spinner operators right they represent the spinner operator for the x y and z component of the electron spin and these matrices operate on spinners which represent the quantum state of the electron 
such as spin up and spin down. Now, if you're really wondering what do we mean by spinner, I will be explaining this in my playlist, a series of videos on Dirac equation. Because spinner is a concept which is used extensively in Dirac equation. However, just to understand right now that spinner is a mathematical component which describes the spin of an electron. As I have already explained in the Dirac equation that electrons take a complete 720 degrees to come back to its original position. So we need a spinner. Now in case of a Pauli matrices we are taking because it is a non-relativistic mathematics that we are dealing with. So we are taking a two-dimensional spinner. If you go to my Dirac equation video, you will see that I have explained that it has got a four-dimensional uh, spinner. So from here what we can see that the Pauli matrices allow us to calculate the outcomes of spin measurements along different axes and helps to describe the behavior of electron spin in external magnetic fields. Okay, so uh, from here what we can understand is that spin measurement along the z-axis. So this one uh, SZ, this first part there are certain key concepts. One is that we have got an eigenvalue. So the measurable values of the spin correspond to that of, of what we call is the spin operator. And then we get what is called an eigenstate. So the eigenvalue, as you can see, the measurables of spin, it can be uh, positive edge bar by 2 or negative edge bar by 2. And eigenstate is the quantum state co which corresponds to these eigenvalues are the eigenstates which describe the electron spin orientation. Now the question is that how do we find them as I was telling that how do we find them so for that there are certain steps that we need to follow the first step is that you need to define the spin operator along the z axis obviously and we have already defined that spin operator as SZ so we just plug in its matrix representation where edge bar is the Planck's reduced Planck's constant so this metric acts on a two component spinner which describes the state of the electron. Now, does this look familiar to you? Yes, because we have just mentioned minus one state when we are just explaining the other part. Now, step two would be putting the eigenvalue equation for spin. And the eigenvalue equation for spin is this. Now, again, I would like to question you, does this look similar? Yes, because if you have watched my earlier video on eigenvalue and eigenvector, this is the same as A lambda, right? This, which is equal to uh, the value uh, multiplied by lambda. So here we are doing the same thing. Instead of A, we are putting in the uh, operator, which is the spin operator SZ. That means the spin operator measuring the spin of an electron along the z-axis. So here what we can say is that here, as you can, I have underlined S is actually the spin operator. This psi is the eigenstate. That means the spin state of the electron. And both the psi obviously have the same. And this lambda is basically the eigenvalue, which represents the measurable spin value. So now that we know, and this looks similar because it is the same eigenvalue uh, equation. Now that we have got uh, the... Uh, I would say the eigen, eigenvalue. So we now solve the equation to find the eigenvalues of the lambda corresponding to the eigenstate. So remember every eigenvalue should be corresponding to the eigenstate. How do we do that? To solve the equation we set up the matrix equation which is this one. Now if you solve this, this will result into two equations. This would be number one. This is equation number one and it would lead to equation number two. Already you see there is a negative sign. So you got the hint. So from equation one, what we can find is lambda equals to h bar by two. Uh, if obviously there is a condition, psi is not equal to zero and psi two equals to zero. What we find from equation 2 is that lambda equals to minus h bar by 2. Obviously, there is a condition what if psi 2 is not equals to 0 and psi 1 equals to 0. So from here, what we can see that we have find the eigenvalues of the operator as that there are two eigenvalues. One is the plus h bar by 2, another is the minus h bar by 2. And now that we know the eigenvalues, we can easily uh, compute the eigenstates. Uh, as you know, I have showed in uh, some of the examples in the last video. So how do we know? Now solving step number four, the eigenstates. So we the, take the first positive and for psi 1, it would be this. 
one zero. This represents the electron having spin up along the z-axis, which is denoted by this one so up. And then we have got uh, lambda two, which is a negative one, and the eigenset for psi two would be zero one, obviously. And this represents the spin down of the z-axis, which is denoted by this. So, what we can tell from here is that Sz actually has got two eigenvalues. One is this, which represents spin up. Another is this, which represents spin down. And the psi plus and psi minus, it represents the quantum state in which the electron spin is aligned with or against the z-axis. Now, this is pretty important. What do we mean by electron spin uh, aligned along the uh, or against the z-axis. I will explain that in the next part of the video. And what do we mean actually by electron spin along and against the z-axis? I will try to give you a very pictorial representation and make you understand. So, first of all, let us understand that the spin of an electron is a type of a angular momentum and in quantum mechanics, we describe the possible spin state using mathematical notation called spinners. So, when we take a kind of an axis, this one, for example, it is a z-axis, when the electron spin is aligned with z-axis, we say that the electron is in the spin-up state, which is uh, mathematically denoted as this. So, this state is represented by a quantum state of a vector as a spinner and the spin up state is uh, something that the notation means if you measure the electron spin along the z-axis, the outcome will be this one, h bar by 2 positive, where h is the reduced Planck's constant and it represents the spin's uh, angular momentum component in the direction. Now, let us take the same electron measuring against the z-axis, which is this one. Let me show you, it is against the z-axis and we say that the electron is in the spin down state which is denoted by this one, 0 and 1 and when we start talk of down state, this means that if you measure the electron spin along the z-axis, the outcome would be this one. So, uh, now there is a, there might be a question which is going, your, or going on in your mind which I am not going to answer but I would say rather you answer in the comment box, why do we measure the spin of an electron along the z axis? Why are we not taking x and y? Why are we taking z? If you really know, uh, please do let me know in the comment box. So, from here what we can say is number one, we talk of spin. Spin is an intrinsic form of angular momentum carried on by particles like electrons. Electrons have a spin quantum number which is this and this meaning that the spin can have take two possible values when, when measured along any axis spin plus h by 2 and when it is against it is minus x by 2. So, spin I would say is quantized can be measured along the axis x, y and z but conventionally we measure well I won't say you need to tell me what actually it is. So, uh, I, this is one, I mean to say, this is uh, what we are trying to now summarize one by one, what we learned from that. So, one part is this. The second thing what we learned is definitely the eigenvalue. So, in quantum mechanics, when we measure something which is observable, so here is the spin, we are measuring it. When we measure an observable like spin, the possible outcomes are the eigenvalues of the corresponding operator. So, for spin along the z-axis, the eigenvalues are h plus 2 or minus h bar by 2 and the eigenvalue corresponds to a measurable quantity such as the amount of spin in a given direction. The next thing what we learned is an eigenvector which represents the quantum state associated with a particular eigenvalue. So, if for electron spin of the uh, eigenvectors or spinners representing the spin up as this and spin down as this against or along with that z-axis, these eigenvalues form the basis for describing the electron spin state. And then we learned what is an, eig uh, uh, what is an eigenstate. And eigenstate, as you see, there is a quantum state that remains unchanged, except uh, it should be for not for scaling, and it is denoted by operators such as this one, sigma z. So the spin up and spin down states uh, along any axis are eigenstates of the corresponding spin operator, meaning that when the measured, the electron will give a definite result, which is the eigenvalue. So, this would be of an eigenstate of the operator sigma z with an eigenvalue of positive h bar by 2. 
so that's all for today's video i mean to say i really don't want to take it long because i just wanted to make you understand what is electron spin and how this eigenvalue and eigenstates operate in terms of electron spin so thank you very much for watching this video if you like the video please do subscribe to my channel physics for student by hitting on the bell icon and click on all to get all the notification from physics for students you can write to my email id which is this and you can subscribe to my other channel which is exclusive to Einstein's general theory of relativity. You can follow me further on my Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and Twitter account. Physics for Students will be soon back with many more videos. But till then, may the good Lord be with you.